Okay, so I'm in my garage right now and I have some things set out for some dyeing that I want to practice. I have some color schemes that I'm thinking about, uh, some hand painted, I want to do some hand painting and I want to do some kettle style dyeing. So I have, um, and actually let me see if I can show you. So if you can see over here, I just picked up from our thrift store an electric um, roaster, which is really cool because it has like specific heat settings. It has a steaming rack, um, so I can do um, steaming in there to heat set, and I can also do some kettle dyeing in there too. Um, I also have, I don't know if you can see, but down below I have some regular roasting pans. Again, I picked these up at a thrift store, super cheap. Those are enamel coated. This is enamel coated. Um, yeah, so those are some things. Then of course I have my uh, my pots up there for immersion dyeing, which I plan on doing some of that as well. Um, but right now, what I'm kind of working on right now is just getting some colors together. So I was trying to think of how to get color inspiration. And when I was watching the Hugh Loco hand dye and yarn tutorials, she talks a lot about going on Pinterest and typing in color schemes or color um, palettes or whatever, and you can get really good color inspiration there. What they do is they show you like a photograph and then they pull the colors from that photograph and they put it in um, kind of like a, like a palette for you. So what I did, I did that. So I did that, but it was something about having that online, like I'd have to open up my phone or my computer and look at it that way, that I couldn't hold it in my hand as easily. So it's there for like color inspiration to get my mind thinking that way, but I needed something more tangible. So uh, my husband and I, um, we threw Angus in the car, we went to Lowe's, and I told him that I wanted to just kind of scour the paint section for paint chips that were inspiring. And so not only did I get a lot of cool paint chips in various different um, inspiring colors, um, something that was even better was that they have, like for different color schemes or inspiration, they have these little brochures that show, just like what the Pinterest site does, or just like what the Pinterest examples do, they show you a photograph and then they show you the paint colors that kind of pull out the main colors in that photograph. And I thought this was great because there were some that I really loved um, looking at imagining kind of like yarn colorways. Of course you wouldn't, I mean, I guess you could, but not being a beginner like I am, I don't think I would incorporate this many colors. Like I wouldn't incorporate this many colors um, in like a kettle dyed yarn, unless of course I'm doing like speckles. But it's cool because you can kind of see what colors look well together. So I have a couple of these. There's some really good ones like I really loved this. I loved the grays or the gray with like the neutral and creamy and the green. But I don't know if you're interested in coming up with like ideas for like color inspiration, check out the paint section in a hardware store because these little pamphlets are awesome. So this one's really cool. It gives you pictures here and then it shows you the colors on the back. Um, so that's what I've been doing with these paint chips. I have so many. I have like this giant stack. So I'm really lucky that they didn't stop me at Lowe's thinking I was stealing all their stuff. Another thing that I'm using right now is the Dharma Trading Company um, dye poster. So these are all of the Dharma acid dye colors. And what I did was I just went through with the black marker and put a little dot next to the ones that I currently have. Um, so I can kind of see what I have and what it looks like. Because when you buy the acid dyes in the jars, um, they don't have anything on the actual jar itself that indicates the color. Um, it's just the name of the color, the dye lot, and then the color number. And so I just kind of wrote the name of the color on the top so that when I store it, I have all my dyes stored in these little skinny boxes here. Um, I can see quickly, like at a glance, what colors I have, and then I can go to my dye chart, see what that looks like when it's mixed according to the directions, and then kind of make some decisions from there. So that chart, my dye jars, of course my color wheel is over there. I've been using that to kind of get an idea of, you know, your complementary, your tertiary, your, you know, all of the color theory that I can say, I can use the jargon, but I'm really not 100% confident with it. Um, but that, and then the paint chips, I think this is like my biggest help because I can see it in front of me. I can see colors that literally go together, you know, whatever works. So that's what I have going on right now. I'm gonna mix up some colors and then I'm gonna go upstairs and practice some 
I think I'm gonna do some kettle dyeing first with some minis that I wound up. So, all right, we'll see you in a bit. all my colors and my respiratory mask gives me this awesome pink line on my chin it's great really happy about that I tutor some kids in about two hours and so they're probably gonna wonder what the heck is wrong with my face after I mixed all my colors I just um, labeled them with masking tape so I know which is which with just the color number because I didn't want to write the whole name out um, so I did that with each of my colors Okay, so I have mixed up my dyes. I showed you those. Um, I am soaking. Let's see, I'm gonna take you over to where I'm soaking some minis. I have some minis in here soaking. Um, there's about five little mini skeins in there. So I'm soaking those. And now I am setting up my place where I'm going to do some hand painting. probably do this differently if I were working with full-size skeins. Actually, no, I would do this differently if I were working with full-size skeins of yarn, um, in which case I have a big table that I would lay out a big space for um, hand painting those. And I probably wouldn't hand paint too many skeins at one time, but um, because the, these are just little skeins, I'm, I'm confident that this space is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and let my um, skeins finish soaking, and then I will lay them out here and we'll begin painting them. But I did do some like depositing of color on the little skeins and the two colors that I was planning on using. And one thing that I've noticed, and I mean, this might sound super um, amateurish, but um, when you deposit the dye stock directly onto the yarn, you're gonna, you're gonna clearly get a much more saturated color in the yarn. And so in my mind, I was thinking of more muted tones, um, but now I know, like, obviously it's gonna be more saturated if you're hand depositing it into the fiber directly from a mixed dye stock. Anyway, so I'm, I'm not unhappy with what I have so far. I mean, it's not even done yet, but um, I have it in here and I'm getting it up to temp to steam. So the water at the bottom of the roasting pan is not simmering yet, but, um, and it's kind of hard to tell with the dark enamel, but it's getting close. So I just went ahead and put it in there so it could start heat setting. And I'm going to, um, over here at my area, I set up my um, electric burner. I haven't plugged it in yet, but I'm gonna set this up. My yarns are still damp over here, so that's fine. So I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna um, set up a little shallow pan. It's a stainless steel pan that I have like this. And it's shallow and it's small otherwise I would use one of the roasting pans that I have and I'm gonna try doing like a kettle dye situation because I think the kettle dyeing will um, because it'll be somewhat submerged in water it'll um, what is it dilute the color a little bit so maybe the color will come out a little bit more muted like I'm thinking I don't know I'm experimenting that's how I learn I'm that's just the way things are for me so we'll see how that goes so stay tuned Okay, so I had to come in my kitchen because the outlet downstairs like blew a fuse and it just kind of threw everything off for me. So I had to change up my plans and I have over here in the roaster a couple of skeins that are um, kind of steaming in there. Like just like there's two tiny little skeins. It seems a little like over the top for such a giant roaster, but that roaster's for larger skeins in the future. Um, and then over here I have a couple of yarns that are working up and guys they're not that good i'm actually kind of i don't know i, you know, I got t like kind of blew my mojo a little bit down there when all that happened so um 
yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to show. They kind of look a little muddy right now. Um, so I'm not going to really rely on this to give you an idea of what I'm making. Um, right now, whatever I come up with will be a learning experience for sure. Because this... So what I've realized in doing this is that when you're working with mini skeins, I mean, it's really hard. It's almost like you need teeny, teeny, tiny pots. Because even if you have, like, a very shallow water in the pan, there's still... And unless I have enough mini skeins, which I don't, um, there's still lots of room for the skeins to move around. And also for the dye to move around. So really what happens is the dye just blends together, and then you can imagine what happens after that. So... I don't know, I think I, I think the hand painted or the hand deposited color um, came out really really good um, but this I'm not so sure how this is gonna go so I don't know I'm tired and I kind of just want to stop and relax so I'll let you know how it goes <laughs> We are actually getting ready to head up to the mountains today. Um, there are some really beautiful mountains. Mount Charleston is in um, the Toyobi National Forest and it's just west of where we live. And so we're gonna head up there. It's about a 45 minute drive um, and go play in the snow because we've had so much rain. It's beautiful. Um, so we're excited to do that. All right guys, we'll see you soon. Bye. situation again with two full-size skeins of yarn so I have my pan set up here shallow water they're getting up to temperature I put the yarn in at room temperature and I'm gonna bring them up to simmer before I add the dye um, we'll see how it goes I just added some dye and I'm really kind of happy with this this is looking it looks fun and colorful um, I did some speckles on there with um, flamingo fluorescent flamingo color so that's what we have so far I like it now I'm gonna let it just simmer for a second and then I'll turn it off I am bearing the red mark of my respirator mask and I'm pretty happy with what I have going here this is the first one that I showed you with some fluorescent pink some salmon colors some kind of like a sherbet type situation happening here and then over here I did some teals again I used that fluorescent pink in this and some gray so we'll see how it comes out I'm way happier with the way this came out than with my other little mini skeins um, which I'll show you those those I, I, I mentioned those in my podcast episode um, but I think yeah it's definitely water temperature plays a really big part of this so I've learned the temperature needs to be at a certain point of simmering before it can the fiber can absorb those colors so I think utilizing that information I've had more success this time so we'll see what it comes out like okay so I have my yarn um, cooling now and you guys I'm so happy with the way this came out it's kind of like a relief because when you um, 
when you do a, a like a hand dyeing session and it just doesn't come out very pretty um, it's like a little bit discouraging but I mean not really I knew it was like a learning experience but anyway I'm happy that this came out the way I expected it to come out pretty much so I'm gonna show you what my stuff looks like so you can see I have two different um, yarns going. I have like a more pink and neon situation over here and then that purple and blue over here. Um, but yeah, it really came out good. I'm really happy with um, the way things turned out. So yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about um, well, I'll just tell you right now. So what I did differently this time that brought me more success than the previous time was that I definitely controlled the temperature of the water better. I put the yarn in at room temperature water, um, brought the temperature up to simmering, and then I added the color when it was simmering so that that color attached to the yarn quickly without spreading through the water and creating kind of a muddy mess. And then I just did some speckles over the top with my mask and my, and my um, goggles. And that's pretty much what what I think is the reason for the success this time is that water temperature. So I'm really pleased with it. I can't wait to wash it off and hang it to dry and see what it looks like. Hey guys, I am coming to you for a brief part of this vlog from my garage slash uh, crafting dyeing studio. Um, it's really festive in here. I put some Christmas lights back there. I thought I needed to jazz the place up a little bit. But um, I'm also doing this with a different lens setup, so I'm testing some things out. That's why the quality is a little bit different here than it was when I was just filming for my iPhone. So um, just testing a few things out, but the sole purpose of this little clip is to share with you my most recent results for hand dyeing yarn. Um, in one bath I came up with this color which is beautiful. I'm so loving the color combinations here. You can see that there's a definite um, difference in contrast of color with the teals and the pale pinks and there's some gray in there and then this purple that's happening it happens throughout the skein and it's coming from some speckles that I actually jostled a little bit. Um, because I wanted them to separate just a little bit. So this came out really, really nicely. Much more separation of color here, much more uh, the result I was looking for, so I was really happy with that. And then my second one is this. So this is using the same pinks and oranges. Well, this is, there's no orange in the other skein, but this is using some orange, but the same pinks from the previous skein, and then also the same um, speckles that were used on the previous skein. I love this one. I think this is a lot of fun. I love, especially here, where you can see the oranges and the pinks and the pale pinks coming through. So, so yeah. I feel like the lesson was learned. I still have a ways to go. I mean, I, I'm definitely a, obviously a beginner at this, but these results were much more desirable than the previous ones. So I'm happy that I was able to use my previous experience to um, create something a little bit more beautiful in my opinion. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So if you're in the midst of doing this right now, if you're starting out hand dyeing, um, maybe this can help you. You can learn from my experience. Um, so just remember those few things I mentioned and you should have a, little, a lot of success in your first kettle dyeing experiment. If you have any other advice for me, any tips that I could use, please leave them in the comment section below if you're willing to share. Uh, I am open to everybody's suggestions, so I appreciate that. So really quick, I'm just gonna show you my bouquet of hand dyed yarn that I've created thus far in 2017. So my previous, this was my first dye experience. This was my second, my third. This is going to be used in the Harry Potter cowl. It's my mud blood color. It's so sloppy right now. <laughs> and then these are the newest ones. So all together, and I'm not including my little muddy uh, test guinea pig yarns for obvious reasons. So there we go. Hand dyed yarn so far of 2017. All right, guys, thank you for watching. That's it for this installment of the vlog. Um, please check out my podcast episodes if you haven't done that yet. Again, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and watching. If you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in less than a week for pod, uh, episode four. All right, see you later.